Hey class, we are back in the lab today and we are going to be doing the uh, antibiotic sensitivity exercise. And so this is an exercise where we are looking to see what antibiotic kills the bacteria. Um, and antibiotic sensitivity, but the method that we're going to be doing today is the Kirby-Bauer method. So that's going to be the method that we're going to be talking about. Um, so starting out, we're just going to do a little bit of review of what antibiotics are, where do they come from, how do they work, um, and then we're going to go over the method and I'm going to demonstrate the method for you. Um, so the word antibiotic itself means against life. So we are going to be killing something. Uh, specifically in this lab, we're going to be killing bacteria. So antibiotics are uh, made naturally by other microorganisms in the environment to combat pathogens. So they are made by fungi and other bacteria. So they are made naturally by these organisms. Uh, the most common example is penicillin, of course. Penicillin is made by a fungus and then we purify it from there. Um, there are other antibiotics that are made uh, by bacteria. Uh, so there are a couple different ways that we can get our antibiotics. The first way is to purify it from these other microorganisms. And the other way is to make them in the lab. Uh, so you can have the ones that are purified from the environment, and then you have ones that are made uh, artificially in the lab. Um, so there are a couple different kinds of antibiotics. There are broad spectrum antibiotics and there are narrow spectrum antibiotics. So broad spectrum antibiotics are exactly what they sound like. They are going to work on a wide range of bacteria. Most of the time it's going to be both gram positives and gram negative bacteria. Um, and then there are narrow spectrum antibiotics, which are what they sound like. They are only going to work on a select group of bacteria. So it's either going to be only working on gram positive organisms or only working on gram negative organisms. They're not going to be able to work on both. And so the reason why you have the difference in broad and narrow spectrum antibiotics is because of the way antibiotics work. Uh, they're going to be inhibiting some type of biochemical process. Now, not all antibiotics work the same way, uh, depending on which biochemical process that they are um, dealing with. So, for example, penicillin prevents the cell wall synthesis. So if the bacteria cannot build its cell wall, it's going to die. Uh, there are other antibiotics out there that are going to prevent some type of metabolism from occurring. If the bacteria cannot make its ATP, can't get its nutrients, then it's going to die. Um, and Or biosynthesis, that's the building of the cell wall, things like that. Um, so all antibiotics work in a little bit different way, and that's why um, we have broad spectrum and then we have narrow spectrum. That's another reason why it's important for us to find out which antibiotic works the best for our bacteria. Bacteria do mutate very quickly. So you might have one that had work, used to work on a bacteria and now it doesn't because the bacteria has mutated. Also, you might have a broad spectrum antibiotic that you would think would work on pretty much everything, but there might be a specific bacteria out there that it doesn't work on. So that's why we have to do this test. Um, so hopefully we can uh, not lead to any resistance because, of course, that is a problem if you um, don't kill all of the bacteria. Whatever bacteria is left will now have a resistance uh, to a certain antibiotic. So that's another reason why you're supposed to take all of the antibiotic whenever a doctor tells you to do that um, so that you don't get a secondary infection or um, so that we don't lead uh, to resistance. So the method that we're going to be doing today is called the Kirby-Bauer method, and it uses what is called a disc diffusion technique. So there's a few things that you need to be able to do this method. The very first and most important is going to be your media. The media that we're going to use for the Kirby-Bauer method is called Mueller Hinton. Mueller Hinton is a specialized auger that is only used for this test. It's not used for anything else. So you need plates of Mueller Hinton. You need a broth culture. So your culture has to be in a broth form because of the way that we're going to put it on the plate. And I'm going to show you how that's going to happen. And then you need antibiotic discs. So the way that you're going to put the antibiotic on the plate is in uh, the form of a very small paper disc. So each disc 
has an antibiotic in it, and I'm going to tell you those antibiotics. It has the antibiotic in it, and it has it at a certain concentration in the little paper disc. So let's talk about how we're going to do this. All right, so here are my Mueller Hinton plates, and I don't know if you can tell this on the video, but these are really large plates. The reason why we use these large plates is because when we're testing for different kinds of sensitivity for uh, different antibiotics, we want to test usually a bunch of antibiotics at a time. So these large plates allow me to test up to 12 antibiotics at a time if I wanted to. Now, Today, you were only going to test four, but if I wanted to, I could test up to 12 for these large plates. So here's my Mueller Hinton plates. I've got three plates because I'm going to be testing the sensitivity on three bacteria. So I'm, um, and then I've got my bacteria here. The bacteria that I'm um, going to be using today is E. coli, Pseudomonas aeruginosa, and Staph aureus. So those are the three bacteria that I'm going to be um, looking at. I got two gram negatives and then a gram positive. So that's my broth culture. I need my antibiotic disc. Now this is a what's called a disc dispenser. And so this dispenses the discs on the plates for me to where I don't have to touch anything because of course we want everything to be done a, um, aseptically. So the I'll take one of these out of here. This is what the antibiotic uh, dispenser little thing looks like. And there are paper discs all stacked up into here. And then this dispenser will, when I press this down, it's going to drop a disc um, on, drop all four discs on the uh, plate at the same time. And the four antibiotics that we are going to be using today are penicillin, tetracycline, erythromycin, and genomycin. Now I'm going to post a table on your uh, Moodle so you don't have to worry about trying to uh, write down those four uh, names. So you'll have those. But those are the four um, <clears throat> antibiotics that we're testing today. So the first thing that I need to do whenever I'm doing this is label. I want to make sure that I label everything. So I'm going to put my bacterial name and I'm going to put the date. That's my E. coli plate. Pseudomonas. And staph. Okay. And the way that we are going to do this is we want what is called a lawn of growth on these plates. So it's not like uh, a streak plate. So we're not going to be using our loop. We're not going to be using the Bunsen burner. Instead, we are going to be using a sterile cotton swab. Okay. So this is sterile. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip the cotton swab into my broth meaty and I'm going to spread it all over the plate because we want a lawn of growth. We want the entire plate to be covered evenly in bacterial colonies. That way, when I place these discs on the plate, no matter where they fall at on the plate, they come in contact with an antibiotic. If you accidentally miss a spot and the disc so happens to drop there, then your results aren't going to be any good because there wasn't bacteria there in the first place. So you want to make sure that you get a nice, even lawn of growth whenever you're doing this. So I'm going to go ahead. Also, you always want to give your bacteria a little mix so that you make sure that you get your cells all mixed in there <clears throat> nice and even all right so now I'm going to start out with my staff and all I'm going to do is take dip once that's all it takes and then I'm going to spread this all over the plate what I always like to do is turn it 90 degrees Make sure that you get coverage all over the plate. And you want to be careful not to press too hard because this is auger and we don't want to um, accidentally pierce it. Okay, so that's my staff. Now I'm going to do my pseudomonas. Normally I would hold these plates whenever I was do, do this, but... These plates are too big for my hands, so it's kind of hard for me to hold. Okay. 
Okay, and lastly, my coli. Okay, so all my plates are inoculated with my bacteria. So now I need to place the discs onto the plate. So all I do is take my plate, take my disc dispenser, put it over the plate, press down, and then there are my nice four antibiotic discs. So that's my E. coli. Now I'm going to do my Pseudomonas. And I'm just using the end of this cotton swab just to kind of lightly press on the antibiotic discs. Just because, remember, whenever we incubate these, we want to incubate them um, inverted. So if I don't kind of tap these on here, whenever I invert the plate, they could potentially fall off. And then that's not going to do any good. All right, so we've got our three plates inoculated with our discs and our bacteria, and I'm going to incubate these for 24 hours, and then I will read the results. So let's talk about what the results are going to look like. Um, so over the next 24 hours, the antibiotic is going to diffuse out into the media um, around the paper discs, and as it diffuses, if the bacteria is sensitive to the antibiotic, you are going to have an area around the disc where there's no bacteria growing at all. This area is called a zone of inhibition. So it's going to be a circle, okay, because the antibiotic is diffusing out evenly. And you are, we are going to measure the diameter of that circle of that zone of inhibition. And depending on how large the diameter is, is going to it's going to tell us if the bacteria is sensitive, resistant, or intermediate to that certain antibiotic. Now, if there is no zone at all and the bacteria grows all the way up to the antibiotic disc, then that automatically tells me that this bacteria is resistant to the antibiotic. So the antibiotic is not going to kill the bacteria. Now, if the zone is a small zone, so there's still a zone there, but it's kind of on the small side, a lot of times this bacteria will be intermediate to that um, antibiotic. And what that means is that it does kill it, but not very efficiently. So there's something else out there that's going to work better than that, uh, than that antibiotic on that bacteria. And then sensitive, of course, usually you have a rather large zone of inhibition and... Um, and then that is, it effectively kills the bacteria. Now, I'm going to post this table on Moodle for you. And this table is the table that you're going to use to read the results. So based on the measurements that you get for each antibiotic, you will then look over and see if the it is sensitive, resistant, or intermediate. Now, the measurements are in millimeters. And so the video that I will post for the results I um, will show you exactly how to read the zones, exactly how to use the ruler and read. Uh, that will be also posted uh, with the video, okay? The chart will also be posted with the video, okay? Um, so good luck, and um, I will also be posting a quiz on this too.